Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today I am going to do some colour mixing in the rain. You can probably hear it pattering away on the roof. Um, so I'm going to be printing the lino version of um, my Pines print. And the first thing I should say is that I did some colours, uh, different blends of, of different colourways, and I put those up on social media. Because I'm selling this print through my shop, I want to know what people kind of like and what they don't like. And social media is a great place to ask that. So the feedback I got were these were the favourite colourways. Now this red and green one, I'm going to put that away for now because I'm probably going to use that colourway or something like it for the version with the woodblock sky. So um, that's kind of out of the equation. And of these, people like this colour sky, and I'm, I'm kind of going to go with that. I don't particularly like this green. I like the sort of more offbeat green. The other thing I like here is having a slight transparency in the ink. So I'm going to aim for that. And it's also important, I think, to capitalise on the cutting. And I really like the way that in this colour version, the um, pine needles show up really well. In the other versions, they kind of disappear into the background. So I'm going to bear that in mind while I'm mixing my colours. So this is the slab where I would mix my colours for my prints. It's an old shower door. And um, I'm going to be using oil-based ink this time around because I want to mix up the ink for the proper edition. And I've got an off-cut here of some paper so that I can test my colours as I go. And I'm just going to pop on a pair of gloves to stop me making a terrible mess. Keep my hands reasonably clean. And I'm going to grab myself plenty of plastic palette knives so that I get enough to do some clean um, mixing. So here I've got a tin of extender. I use a lot of extender so it's really worth having a whole tin of it. I'll wallop through it quite fast. Extender, if you are new to my channel, is ink with no colour in it. That's going to give me some transparency in the colours that I mix. So I've got plenty of um, extender here. Now you can see I have put um, a polythene disc on the top of it. It's getting quite low now, but that it comes with a plastic uh, sort of um, acetate lid over the top of the ink. And I always want to tear that. So I replace that with, um, let me just grab the tab of it. Um, so I replace that with strong polythene so that when I'm opening it up like this, um, it's not going to tear and it's going to go down back over my ink and I can push it down to keep things clean. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get myself some extender. I'm going to mix the background sky first of all. And since I'm aiming to print maybe 50 prints, I'm going to start off with a good big dollop there of extender and put that back down and I'm also going to add a little bit of white to that. Now I could use the extender to extend my inks to make them paler and it will do that to a degree. However, I've got a lot of these to print and just putting a bit of white into the equation will make it much easier for me to get a smooth background print than if I was using just extender with ink. When you use transparent extender with very little pigment in it, it looks beautiful and it gives you the translucency for the white of the paper to shine through, but it's a lot fiddlier to print than ordinary opaque ink. It just takes time and patience. And when I've got 50 of these to do, I just don't want to be spending a long time on each print trying to get that transparent extender right. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of white into the mix. Just a pragmatic decision to make that printing go a little bit easier. Not a massive amount, just a little bit. And that's just going to make 
give me a fighting chance to get a nice smooth background fairly easily. So this is my base that I'm mixing here. And at this stage, I'm not going to add any dryers to this because this is kind of the mother load of ink and I, I will only add dryers to it when I'm using it and I'm not going to use all of this at once. Okay. So I'm going to go with um, Prussian blue here simply because part of that's kind of an homage to Japan because Prussian blue appears quite often in Japanese prints but also it's going to give quite a nice almost a bluey green feel to the sky so I'm just going to pop that up there now it's quite bright I'm probably going to need to cut it a little bit and calm it down a bit so I'm going to have a little bit of this is blue black this is um, Cranfield's traditional relief ink and they do a blue black which I quite like um, it doesn't show so much when it's neat pigment but when you mix it um, or dilute it with extender that that blueiness comes through and I really quite like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white and pop it over here because I need to know what my mix is going to look like between the with the Prussian blue because I'm just going to start cutting it a little bit with the blue black and although I can sort of see what I'm up to when I'm spreading it on the slab it's much easier if I add it to the little bit of white so when I think that I'm sort of at a good starting point I'm just going to get a little bit of that and just see and yeah I'm looking at that and for me that's still a bit too blue blue so I'm going to go back and add in a little bit more of that blue black and working this way it, it avoids waste because I'm not immediately lumping this into this and regretting it I'm, I'm working my way through until I'm pretty sure about the shade the tone of the colour and the shade that I'm working with yes this is better for me this is a better colour it's not so now I think that I've got a better colour I'm now going to test it on paper so I keep all my off cuts of paper for colour testing so I'm just going to use my finger and check that that blue yes it's nice it, it's it's Prussian but it's tipping towards the indigo and away from that kind of very bright um, shouty blue that Prussian blue can be sometimes to so. say cool so now that I've got that I want to do a rainbow roll I want to have a pale tone high in the sky going down to a darker tone and I'll, I want to do that if I show you on the picture let's go back to oh that's a better example let me find you a good example if I go back to this one, if I have a pale tone up here, then the darker area down here highlights the moon and makes the most of that. Pale tone up here makes the most of the pine needles. So it's a kind of a win-win, it's a pragmatic decision. And also, while I've got this print here, you can see possibly in the sky, it's a little bit blotchy. This is a sky just using extender. And here, when I've rolled it out, I haven't got it quite right, so it's a little bit blotchy. So it's that kind of um, problem that I'm dodging by mixing that white into the into the extender. So it's not quite so tricky to handle. So I'm going to come over here with this white, and I'm going to start adding that blue. And I'm just going to go by degrees so that it doesn't all rush up on me and I have too much at once. Because printing inks are expensive and there is nothing more frustrating than when you start 
mixing ink only to discover that you've got the wrong colour and no matter what you do the colour just goes worse in my experience with my colour mixing I just end up at a sort of particularly horrible shade of brown that never improves so I am always a little bit wary okay let's have a look at that the other thing that you need to factor in when you're mixing inks for lino is the fact that you're going to roll them out thinner as well and in my case very thin so you know what you see isn't quite what you get okay so i'm still not quite happy with that still to me that's still looking a fraction blue too blue i should say so i'm just going to add in a touch more of that blue black just to resolve that a little bit I mean, how you mix colour is, of course, very personal, but I spend a lot of my time trying to make colours, um, take them away from kind of synthetic and into the more natural um, feeling colours. So I'm always kind of knocking colours back and changing them uh, like I am here with the blue, where I'm even going to just add a tiny bit of that blue black it's not that I want dreary colours it's just that I don't want them to shout that they've just come out of the tube so I'm getting a bit more confident here now that I'm kind of getting an eye for how much I may need in that blend yes that's really starting to come now I'm starting to get where I want to be with that if I go back to my reference one it's not far off where I was with that and I'm kind of happier with that so I'm going to stop there with that one and just pop that to the back and then I'm going to bring a little bit more of this down here so this white and extender won't be wasted if I don't use it mixing this batch of inks I'll use it for mixing the uh, tree trunks so it's, it won't go to waste and I know, we know already with this, that this is the darker one, so I can be bolder. I'm just going to take a little bit more of that blue black. So I'm now thinking that I kind of like that, but I'd like it to be a bit more intense. So what I might do is add a bit more pigment and a bit more extender um, and lose some of that white. So let's just put that down. That's the Prussian blue that I was using before. And that's the blue black. Now, I am very mean about ink. I don't like to waste ink. I never have. Um, when I was a student, I had to buy my own printing ink, and so I got into the habit of not wasting it then. So I try and re I try and use ink very carefully, which is part of the reason why I'm mixing it this way round. better now it's coming I 
So I don't have like a set range of colours that I use again and again. I always just mix as I go. And my colours do change quite a lot over the years, but they tend to be quite complicated mixtures. And then I often use what's left over from one layer to mix into the next layer. Again, so that it doesn't get wasted. But also in my experience, if you do that, you can end up with a really nice kind of interconnection of colours in the print. Okay. Yep, so now I have got quite a nice blue. Look, let's go back to that. That's very similar to the blue in that print. I might even go just a little bit darker. And I make no apologies for the time this is taking because um, I think it's important to see that a lot of thought goes into this, that um, mixing colour, it just takes time. It's part of the job. Um, it tends not to be talked about so much, but... Okay, so now I have my blues and I am going to add a little yet more extended to that to make them a little bit more transparent. So I'm hoping that my next batch of extender shows up reasonably soon because I am running low. So that extender is going to make it more transparent. It's not going to change the colour, but it will make it uh, transparent when I more transparent when I print with it. So the white of the paper will show more. And that does have a bearing on how pale the ink looks. So if you use a lot of, uh, a lot of extender to make print transparent, do remember to factor in the white of the paper and the effect it's going to have. So now I've got the ink mixed up into the colours that I want. I'm now going to take a print from it and um, I'm going to spread it out. But before I do, this is the background that I'm going to print and I'm going to do a rainbow roll. And in order to do that, um, I have to keep the roller consistently in one direction or I mess up the rainbow. So if you are doing this, it pays to use a roller that is the right width, um, preferably wider than your um, plate, because then you're not trying to angle around. If I used one of my little ones and I had a rainbow roll, I'd be really, you know, I'd be screwed. I wouldn't be able to ink with it. If I have a great big block and I'm doing a rainbow roll, what I'll often do is to have the rainbow across a long roller and I'll do the centre of it and then I'll use a little roller to do the solid colours on either side. But that's only really when I'm doing a massive block with a huge rainbow roll. So for a block this size, that's great. I've got a roller that fits. Brilliant. So the other thing that I would say is that if normally I would ink up at the printing press, I'm not going to do that today uh, simply because we're filming. But if I was inking up at the printing press and my plate was in my printing press a particular way round, I would take the trouble to work out which way to put my rainbow roll so that I could roll it out, pick up my roller, go to the print, 
and ink it up in the right orientation so that I wasn't constantly having to flip the roller to change the rainbow roll. Because the more consistent you are with rainbow rolls, the less likely you are to put your roller back in the wrong orientation and spoil it when you are inking up. I'm going to spread out my ink and I'm going to think about the proportions where I want the bleed to be. So I want less pale ink up in the sky, I think, and slightly more of the darker version. So just put those together. And I'm not putting so much ink down at the front here where I'm going to do the rollering because I don't want to get into too much of a mess. I want to keep everything very controlled. So I'm going to start and you see how I'm just catching the ink from the front of the roll. If I put the roller right in the middle of the ink, you're instantly overloading everything. This way, I can go back and take more ink as I need to, rather than starting off with too much ink. So I can just work my way through. One of the things with rainbow rolls that you have to keep an eye on is where the rainbow joins. It's very easy to get kind of an underinked patch in the middle there. You need to make sure that your colours are marrying up and getting equal amounts of ink. So I'm just going to pull a little bit of ink down there because I've got a weak point there which is missing as much ink. So just keep an eye on that centre of the rainbow roll. And keep an eye on the edges as well, because if you're not careful, you can end up with a build-up of ink down the edge of the roller as well. So you get a sort of fat bit around the end of the roller, which is going to over-ink the print. So just be careful about that. So I've got the ink fairly thinly rolled out there, and I'm going to start with a thin roll of ink, because I, I think that's what I want. I can always double-ink the print if I want to build up the layers until I know exactly how dense I want the ink to be. So I'm going to start off fairly thin, but before I, I do anything, I just want to talk to you about drier for this oil-based ink. So if I were printing the edition today and I knew I was going to get through all of this ink, I would be adding drier. The drier that I like is Cranfield's Wax Dryer. This is a manganese dryer in um a suspension of it says wax I, it's a bit like uh, it, it's more like petroleum jelly i'm not i'm not sure what the mix is but i use that at about four percent three or four percent in volume to the ink and that really does speed up drying times but it doesn't make it glossy like a cobalt dryer would so i really like that product however once you've added dryer it dries the ink so it's not a great idea to add dryer if you are like I am going to finish filming and then not ink up until maybe tomorrow or the next day and I want my ink to stay nice and uh, wet so I'm not going to add dryer at all today I'm just going to print without dryers for the sake of this film so now I have got my ink mixed and I'm going to roll it out so let me just get this around the right way and I can start inking up so I'm just taking my time and keeping a roll consistent now I'm getting um, ink into the dead space there. I'm not that fussed about it at the moment. That's partially because I'm having to do this sort of balanced on a, an inking plate and partially because I'm having to ink in a very fixed way because of the rainbow roll. So I'm just going to wipe that out. When I come to print the edition, what I'll probably do is either I'll get a Stanley knife and I'll actually cut that bit of lino away or I'll put a plastic uh, mask into the um, space and just look, I've just flicked a piece of grub onto there. Um, put a plastic mask over that area. When 
of the things that I've become aware of since we've been making films is how when you make a film, you can't work in an optimal way that you would normally work in. And I now find that I look out for that in other people's films and I really admire people who are sort of working to accommodate the filming. But I'm just going to wipe this away and then I'm going to go over to my printing press and take a print and see what we've got. So, a couple of things. I'm really happy about the colours, not really happy about these lines here. So that's my bad, that's my, my inking that's an issue there. But that said, I like the colours, I like the way this is fading out. The only thing I might change is to perhaps even make it denser. I might think about adding a darker blue when I addition and going into um, maybe even a, a three colour rainbow roll. So that's something to think about. So now I, I have the sky worked out. I'm going to clear all this up to the top of the um, slab and work on the colour for the branches. So what I've done now is I've had a clean up and I've put my ink that I've mixed my blues under these plastic uh, these are actually little plastic trays for mixing paint colours, but I use them to cap inks on my glass sheet because it keeps the dust off and it just keeps them all in one place. And they're also pretty easy to clean off. Um, so I've got my inks under there for my blue sky and now I'm going to mix up the greens. Now normally I always mix my own greens and I've made a couple of films about mixing the colour green. Um, in another series on this um, channel so do check those out. I'm actually going to use pre-mixed green here which I wouldn't normally do but I bought this um, olive green this is Lawrence Art Supplies uh, and they do this olive green and actually I really like it um, I don't usually use it neat but I do like it mixed with another one of their colours which is their Payne's Grey now these are two pretty transparent colours on there in themselves. I find Lawrence's inks are slightly softer than Cranfield's traditional inks. They're more like, they're almost like the texture of the safe wash, the Caligo inks, but they're not, they're not safe wash. So let's just put a bit of those out. So if I use my paper, this is my paper I've been mixing my blues, and up at the top here, I've put large smears of the blues I did decide to go with because I need to think about that colour in relation to these ones that I'm mixing now. Um, so if I have a little look at this up this end, that green and that grey. So they are quite strong colours in their own right but rolled out thin, they're going to be more transparent than that. So I'm just going to use the grey to knock the green back a little bit. So we'll start off with all the green and a little bit of the grey. Because I don't want these pine trees to be too bright. I want them kind of a, a subdued green. So now I'm starting to get quite a nice colour there. Now I'm adding the grey in. In my prints that I was looking at before, I quite liked 
down here you can see this is quite a dark colour but quite thin so this extender added into that but I'm going to add a tiny bit of red in there because it's still for me that's too green green so let's just have a little bit of um, a bright this is a poppy red I'm using here so let's just pop a little bit of that there And I'm just using a smidge of that to get this green less dominant. And again, I've got my white with the extender that I was using last time. I probably won't use very much of it this time. Um, not to worry because I have a use for it, but it's going to be handy to help me see what my colour mix is really doing. So I'm going to pinch clean palette knife, pinch a bit off, stick it in there so that I can see how greener green I'm making. Okay, a little bit more red, I think. And now maybe I will bring in some of this white. So this is for the body of the trees. And it's for the top half of my rainbow roll. So it's for the paler bit of the rainbow roll. And I'm going to add some extender to this as well. I think we'll have far rather add things by degrees than start off with too much of everything so It's surprising how much of that paint grey that green will take without tipping into grey. In fact, I'm really going to go for it now and add the rest of that. And then I can bring in the rest of the white. And what I've done is I've gone, if I use the unmixed green to show you, and then the green with the grey and the red, you can see I've gone from really quite a strong green to this much more subtle sort of colour here. I'm not going to dilute it any more than that. That is my paler. Um, ink, what I'm going to do is use a very thin layer of it for doing the tree trunks with. So I'm just going to park that for a minute and do the darker part of the tree trunk. So the darker part of the tree trunk 
I am definitely going to be using um, plenty of red because I want to tip it from green into sort of almost a khaki brownie kind of colour. So I'm going with plenty of this. And the first thing I'm going to do is to take all of that red and get in there. Even some more. So we've gone from green right into this kind of reddish khaki brown. And I'm just going to add a little bit of grey to that. Which is going to tip it almost green again. And then I'm going to add some extender to that. Because I quite like the way on this print how this dark tone is quite transparent. So I'm, I'm looking to not have the same thing, but to get almost there with it. I've got a jumper this colour. Should have worn it today. Yeah, that's quite a nice colour. So now I'm going to go up to the top of my colour mixing here and just see how that looks. So you can see I'm, I'm taking a bit of ink and I'm really rubbing it into the paper because I'm trying to make it look like it will look when it's printed rather than when it's just a blob of ink on my finger. Good. I think that is a little bit too dense. So I'm going to come down here and make it transparent. see why I buy extender in tins. Okay. Right, let's give this a go. And again, you can see that little bald patch in the middle there. I'm just going to put a little bit more ink down there to take care of that. Just 
take your time when you're rolling out. It takes a while just to get everything right. So now I've got my roll sorted. Let's just ink this up. things that I'm trying to do at the moment is to make sure that I get the edges of things inked. As I say, when I addition, I'll be inking this up in the press, it'll be a bit easier to do. But for now, I'm just making sure that I've got a nice layer. that I haven't missed anything and that everything is, is nicely covered. And as before, when it comes to actually printing the addition, I'm going to probably just cut away this area here. But for now, I'm just going to wipe it. And it's ready to go over and print. So now I've printed this next layer. I'm liking the green. I'm really happy with that green and that kind of ochre khaki colour, especially against the blue. But now I look at this, I can see that I really need a darker blue at the bottom. I like this mid blue and I like this pale blue up the top here, but I'd like there to be a darker blue down here. So that's a choice that I can change. And also it'll change quite a lot when I get the last layer on. And for that, I'm going to use the green that I didn't print with here. And I'm going to make it much darker. So let's just pop that down here. And I'm going to go back to that blue black color that I was talking about at the beginning. And I'm using the green here, some of the green, it, I may go so that the green will show, it depends how dominant it is. Sometimes if I am mixing a dark ink, um, I might just use the previous leftover ink as bulk almost. Um, and it's hidden by the dark colour. And it just um, serves the purpose of adding a bulk to that dark colour. But here I think I'm going to keep it so that it it does show as being green but is quite a dark colour. So let's just go with that. So that's that blue-black mixed with my green here. And for this block I can use a little roller because there's no rainbow roll.
and I'll go back and put my print back down and take the final um, impression. So there you have it. I've got a few things to sort out. I'm basically I'm happy with the colours. I think that uh, the blue definitely needs to be bolder down at the bottom here, but I quite like the paleness of it up here. I think that having the greeny grey top layer rather than a black layer works. I've got the definition of the pine needles that I wanted. Do bear in mind that this is printed wet on wet as well, which is not optimal. When I come to addition this, I'm going to be printing on Hosho paper, which is a lovely washi paper, and I'm going to be printing and letting the print dry between layers, so it'll be much more crisp when I do the version in my shop. So I hope you found that colour mixing helpful. And I hope you'll be joining me again for another film in the series where I'm going to look at that blind embossing. I cut a moon that was going to be blind embossed and then that's vanished off the face of the earth. So um, it's going to be coming back into the story in another film. So I hope to see you in the studio again. Thank you very much.